I've just managed to acquire this Mark 1 Audi TT for my favourite price ever. Absolutely free. So there's obviously a little bit more to it than that. Before I show you around this car, let's explain how we got to where we are today. So here is car number one. A little bit rough around the edges, needs a little bit of work, but that's why I bought it, so that I can add value to it, sell it on, make some money, rinse and repeat. So someone's done something magical to this exhaust. Uh, that takes some effort, that does. I've got a smashed mirror, not the end of the world. Really rusty wing. You know, that's going to need changing. For those of you that don't know, that is single mass flywheel rattle, okay? Uh, which is why we have a dual mass flywheel on these. For some reason, this has been converted. Engine itself does sound all right. When I give it a rev, it's, it's all good. We have got a, an issue with this driver's lock. Turn the key, and it's doing nothing. But you can hear that the blade isn't attached to the inner door lock. So hopefully that's gonna be a really easy fix. It's on coilovers. It's got these nice wheels. I've got to work out exactly what they are, but I don't mind the look of those at all. I think they're quite smart. So why did I get it so cheap? Well, the one problem that I haven't told you about is that the slave cylinder's gone. Other than labor, that's a nice cheap job to do. So what are the numbers? Well, I gave him 630 pounds for it and I had to pay 80 pounds to get it delivered to the unit. So at the moment it stands me in at 710 pounds. So we give it a push into the unit. Definitely brake fluid coming out of that hole in the bell housing. I'm literally coming at this on the back of a few days of doing clutches. Uh, so I'm not whipping the box off today, but I can give it an inspection while it's up on the ramp. So let's have a look. Here we go. Lowered car, hit the clamp, it's pulled it that way, shoved the whole system this way, just pushing this tip out. This tip stayed roughly where it is because it's twisted. So yeah, there we go, that solves that problem. So quite simply, sorting all this join out should solve that. Yeah, this wing definitely wants replacing. It's just, uh, oh wow, that's really rotten. I suppose I should probably get around to fitting this slave cylinder. Just had a call about a wing, so that's sorted. So now that I know that that's sorted, I can put the time and effort into doing El Slavo Cylindrio. Good fun. Uh, incidentally, if you want a guide on how to do the slave cylinder and the clutch, link up there for a 45 minute long video. This will not be a how-to. Yeah, that slave cylinder is destroyed. While it's up in the air, this exhaust needed sorting. I've done it. Well, um, I've done the wing. So that is now nice and fresh. Uh, I've sorted the door lock, sorted the mirror glass. Um, and I've had to do it all on a late, on a Sunday afternoon, uh, when I've already done a four day's work. Uh, here's the the dead wing on the floor, well and truly shot to pieces. And I've had to rush it through and I've not been able to film what I'm doing, so I apologize for that. But we'll do that on the next ones. Um, because literally, guys hanging around the unit here say, oh, you know, oh, I like the look of that one. Yeah, that one's for sale actually. Oh, okay, cool. So literally, he messaged me last night, I love it. I'm like, oh, I still need to do X, Y, Z to it. But he's happy to take it on. Um, in the condition that it is, he's had a good look around it. He's happy, we've sorted out a good price. He's paid me 1,500 great British pounds. And so we'll do a tot up on the screen of my cost uh, and how much I've made on that one and roll it onto the next one. Did have an issue with the spacers on the front in the one of the, um, cause they're five by 100 to five by 112. He's killed the threads on one. So I've had to order him a set of spacers, so we need to knock that out of the price, 58 pound and something. We need to knock that out of the profit. I had to get those delivered to his house. He's happy to drive it back how it is now. Um, yeah, sorry about the rushed end to this section, but that means we've now got a chunk of cash to go find the next one. And I think I've got one lined up. So enjoy the drive. Catch you in a bit, man. So it's time for me to introduce the second vehicle of this series. No, it's not this one. As much as I'd love to buy a purple one, 
this isn't the one. This is just a customer's car that I've just finished doing a load of work on that happens to live really close to the person who I actually want to buy a car off. So I'm going to drop this off and then we can have a look at the next car. Oh, right, okay. So end of the, well, midway through the adventure of the evening, I'm here with the car. Look at that plate, amazing, love it. So, I mean, I've had a quick look around. Uh, obviously, I worked on it for, what was it, back in the last year. Yep. I like the car, but how, how much are you thinking? About 2K. Two? Oh, I was kind of hoping more like one. So we're a bit of a... I can go up to two and a half. Oh, I don't know. Oh, um, <laughs> I can get down to 500 if you want. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. What about 1,300? I'll meet you in the middle of 15. 15? Yeah. Go on and give us a key. <laughs> hey, I've got a car! <laughs> I did work on this for Steve back in the last year. Um, had a look over it and I know it's a, a really good base of a car. It's just got a few little niggles that we need to sort. Um, so perfect for this sort of thing. And I'm dead chuffed to have another noggy. It's been um, about a year since I last owned the noggy. We've got a boost gauge. So we can see what's going on with that. Uh, first impressions are, there's a little bit of hesitation at lower revs off boost. I think we've got some VAC issues, if I'm honest. Um, when, it, when I first saw it, it had a manual boost controller on and we put it back to an N75. Uh, and he's saying it seems to be all right, but we need to, yeah, I need to do some logging and see what's going on. Uh, all of that is going to be tomorrow. For you, it's going to be in about, oh, I don't know, a minute's time on the video. Stuck. Stuck. I found the problem. Oh, the joys of TTs. Broken down. Uh, and I'm in my civvies because all I was doing was switching cars around and taking this car back to my house. The plan was to be doing some work on it tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna do the turbo on it because it is all but sold. Um, but yeah, now I need to do either the regulator or the alternator at the side of the road. Great. Suppose I should probably try and get a lift home. Hmm, might take a while. I'm actually doing what a lot of the UK get to do now, which is work from home. Great. Um, been a little bit faff, but uh, I've got no space at the unit and I was on daddy daycare for a few days, so I figured might as well crack on and get this done. Turbo's off. I'm gonna show you the issue that I was having with it. That shouldn't be happening, because when it's there, that gets stuck. Can't open freely, and it can open and then get stuck there not good at all so the new one nice and fresh good to go so the um, previous studs obviously weren't reusable so fresh studs on there ready to go in So I've been digging through for hours trying to put this video together for you and I realised that, yeah, I haven't got the clip where uh, I discuss everything that happened with the Noggy. Uh, but basically, as soon as I bought it and posted a couple of pictures saying that this was the next one that I was working on, uh, Martin got in touch with me and was like, Bryn, I want to buy it. And I explained to him the issues that I was having with it, that the turbo was boosted or not boosted, I needed to investigate that, uh, and he was happy to wait. So yeah, found out that the, the wastegate was the issue, fixed that as you've seen in the footage, but he was happy that he was gonna look after the bodywork side of things that it needed, just um, yeah, livening up a bit of the paintwork and, and things like that. But he was dead happy with the car. So, because I didn't clear it with Martin, I'm not gonna go into specifics on the numbers. I'm not gonna tell you what he paid for the car. But what I can tell you is that once I take away the cost of buying the black one, the cost of doing the bits to it, the cost of doing the bits to the blue one, we're left with about 1,500 pounds in profit. 
So I've taken away all my initial investments and now I'm just playing with free money. Obviously this isn't technically free, I've paid money for it, but the money I've paid is all the profit I made off those first two vehicles. So, you know, man maths, explain it to the wife, this is free, okay? It's not cost me any of the money that should be in the house or paying bills. So why did I buy this car in particular? Well, for me, the main reason is that I've actually looked after this car for a few years. I've done the clutch for the previous owner. I've done the turbo. I've done front mount intercooler. Uh, we've done cam belt. Uh, we've done full three inch Scorpion exhaust from turbo to back box. So for me, it's perfect. I know the history. It's got an absolutely full comprehensive service history from before I was looking after it. So for me, it's an absolute no brainer. And the best bit is that it came up for sale at exactly the right amount of money to use all the profit from the previous two vehicles to buy this. So like I say, I'm at complete scratch. So let's have a look around. So there's actually a very good reason behind buying this car. It's not just because it came up and it was the right money and it's the, ne the next car in the sequence. No, this car has got all the right modifications. It's had the right work done to it so that I can take it to the Nürburgring and not worry. And the best bit about it is because it's not cost me anything, I'm not scared of taking it. I'm not scared what happens if I hit the barriers or someone crashes into me. It doesn't matter. Other than the financial burden of getting home and fixing the barriers and other people's vehicles, which you've always got, this vehicle means nothing to me. I've got no attachment to it. I'm literally going to take it there, absolutely abuse it around the track, bring it back, fix anything that goes wrong and sell it. Okay, so we do need to address why this car was so cheap because let's face it, 1,500 quid for uh, 144,000 miles with all these modifications. I mean, that's either a really good deal or there's something wrong. There's definitely something wrong. The rear diff, it's binding when we're reversing and turning. So while I haven't looked into this issue personally, people that he has had to, uh, have a look at it recently have said they advise a new rear diff. Now I'm gonna get it up on the ramp, we're gonna have a look at what's going on, see if the Haldex is catching, see if the diff itself is catching, see what's going on. But I've got an entire rear end available to me that I can just swap everything over uh, and have done with it. And that might be the easiest solution. And while we're doing that, freshen up a few of the bushes and make sure everything's okay. Once that's done, mechanically, she's good to go. So on the drive home, engine felt good. Didn't feel like it was properly optimized for the modifications that it's got, but it's only got a Revo Stage 2 map on there, and they're not known to be the best anyway, let alone then with modifications uh, that are you know maybe a little bit outside of the norm for a Stage 2 Revo map. So for me to extract the best from this, I'm probably gonna benefit from taking it for a custom map. Now there are some bodywork issues to address. We've got a crease in the bumper here where there's been a little bit of an impact. Um, so that's gonna require a new bumper and paintwork. We've also got quite heavy stone chip across the front bumper. But because I'm taking it to the Nürburgring, there's absolutely no reason for me to address those body defects before I go. It just wouldn't make sense, because let's face it, So engine bay wise, we're pretty sorted. We've got this cold side relocation for the diverter valve. We've got a foam air filter on there. We've got a three inch intake pipe. We've got a catch can set up to get rid of all the PCV. I know for a fact that the seals for the injectors have been done because I did them. And we've got the full bigger pipe work all the way around for this big front mount intercooler. So as a start point for having good reliable power, it's there. Now it's also been gifted to a set of Goodyear Eagle F1s and these have got plenty of life in them. So they should get me there and back and round the ring no problem at all. It's on standard suspension, on standard brakes 
Um, and as I was taking it for a spirited drive on the way back, it is clear that the suspension is going to need some work. We've got this full exhaust system. Did I mention it's got a nice exhaust? As I said, it's a sports cat, so it's going to flow nicely. Now, list of modifications that I think we're going to have to do to make this a viable vehicle for the Nürburgring. So, temperatures inside here, going to be an issue. Um, even just after two, three minutes of absolute flat out driving around some country roads that I know really well, and let's face it, that's still not probably as flat out as I will be on the Nürburgring, coolant temperatures were creeping high into the 90s. Uh, oil temps I wasn't monitoring, but you can guarantee that those are up there as well. So we need to sort out cooling and we need to do it on the cheap. I've really picked the wrong time to do this video today, haven't I? But this is the only time I've got. So sorry about the tractor, you'll have to live with it. Anyway, so cooling wise, we're going to have to do a little bit of work. Now, there's a few things that we can do that are nice and cheap and easy. The first thing is cutting a big hole in the bonnet to allow all the hot air that's stuck inside there to get out. Uh, we can put an oil cooler on there, uh, which isn't massively expensive, but it is a little bit. Um, so I'm going to weigh up the, the options on that. We can also add water meth injection, which is going to help with the air intake temperatures. Obviously, suspension wise, we're going to need to change stuff around. So I'm thinking either a good set of coilovers uh, at the very least, uh, just freshen up what's there, but I think it needs to be stiffer to deal with uh, the, the big compressions um, and the fast corners that we're gonna be dealing with at the Nürburgring. Uh, we want stability, uh, we don't want it bottoming out. Uh, we'll probably change poly bushes on the front arms uh, and just make sure that the bushes on the rear are healthy. So I was having a look at cars for the Nürburgring, what I thought would be suitable for, you know, not necessarily ridiculous power, but good handling, um, reliable, although, let's face it, I make a living out of fixing these. Um, and the TT just can't be beaten. Bang for buck. You know, for 1,500 quid, two grand, I couldn't find anything that would have weighed up to this car and that would give me as much fun around the track. So it's a bit of a no-brainer. They're still at a really attractive price. Even for a, a car that wouldn't need any work, two grand wouldn't have been a, a stretch to buy a decent example. Um, now it does you know, have its perks that I've got one where I can go like this. And I can enjoy it because it's already got some power, it's got a nice sound and exhaust. Um, but yeah, the, like I said, the TT just in general can't be beaten bang for buck. But I challenge you to do this. Find a car with over 200 horsepower, maybe 250 horsepower, let's call that the benchmark. 250 horsepower, four wheel drive, sporty car, uh, that's gonna be nice and comfy to get you there. It's gonna do all the laps you wanna do and it's gonna bring you home. Preferably with things like uh, leather seats, uh, Xenon lights, nice little perks like that even maybe cruise control uh, but yeah I challenge you find something and let me know so obviously I did speak to everyone that I've bought and sold a car for as part of this series I have spoke to them about it they're aware of what's going on uh, and they're not annoyed at me for buying their broken car fixing it and making money it's the way of the world but I don't want there to be anything hidden so I hope you appreciate the transparency and the honesty with this um, I'm going to try and keep you as up to date as possible with what we spend on this one as well. Uh, and again, if you want to then buy this car when I'm done with it, get in touch. It's not going to be 1500 quid. It's going to be a fair market value. I'm not greedy, but I've got to make money on them. So if you haven't already done so, hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified of the next video where we're going to get this car up on the ramp. Make sure there's no hidden surprises, do some nice modifications and get it ready for the ring.